<laughs> Professional standpoint, I'd rather have them hire me because of me. Because, yeah, I guess. In a weird sense, this could be related to not wanting to be a person who's typecast. Wanting to be. Sorry for that. Anyway. Maybe I need to exaggerate some attribute. Oh. Well, what's the problem with your guardian then? If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I fear she might look at me and see her daughter. But seeing me makes her sad. Oh. I'm sure that's not the case. At this point, I don't even care. What was that? What did I do? I must have accidentally like tried to open a menu or something. Yeah, I don't care if she's protect projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want to make her feel sad. Did you try talking with her? How so? Telling her just what you said to me, clear up those fears? Yeah, just talk it out. Unless she's not the kind that to want anyone opening up to her, that is. I never really thought about talking to her. <laughs> it's amazing how sometimes the simplest solutions escape us. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up, though. Keep it in mind, at least. She'll, maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is mostly with me, I think. Well, I'm, I'm taking my break. Ooh, I'll be leaving then. No, what I was trying to say is I'm taking my break. You wanna come? Really? If you don't mind t taking on talking on a chilly night in an alley behind the bar, that is. <laughs> I've done worse in alleys. Let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Alright. Alrighty. Oh, this is cool. Don't call me Becky. Uh, alright. Want one? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Just get out of here. Now you're a little girl. I always am. Innocence, however, is another matter entirely. But anyway, thanks. No, smoking seriously messes with my air filters and they're a hassle to replace. Don't mind me though, smoke to your heart's content. Thanks. So why don't you tell me about this guardian of yours? I want to know what kind of woman she is. Jill's, Jill's expression um, just looks so... like... It's weird, because it's basically the same one that she had when she was the bar client, but I feel like without the full picture, it seems a lot. Well, it seems like half the time she was nervously smiling while on the other side of the bar. Sophia Graham. I, I I'm sorry. I just bounced around from a thought I was having outside of dialogue to reading the name there. Anyway, I don't know. Jill's picture looks sad, and yeah, that's all I was observing. <laughs> Graham? That, does that name mean something to her? She's a retired PE teacher. Nowadays she works at the gym during the morning shift. Looks like a dead daughter. Graham. Ingram? Ingram. That was the ball of the red spikes, but that was, that was, that wasn't just the name Graham. She's pretty fit if I do say so myself. She had a daughter, apparently she sh suffered from nano machine rejection all her life. And when she finally healed, she was hit by a truck. Oh no. Um, what was her daughter's name? I don't know. I never asked, really. 
Are you okay? I'm reading fear. Is that surprise? It's hard to tell. I'm fine. You read? Well, I don't see emotions like you do. I have to make do with a combination of body and heat readings, face, re face recognition, and context. Okay, that's weird. I'm still a bit confused about some, but I've gotten better with time. Anyway, you sure you're fine? Yeah, yeah. Scared or surprised, she's not wrong though. Wait, does that mean your last name isn't really Hayes? Hayes is just my artistic name. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Sounds more exotic than what people usually look for in this business. I tried other names though. Genesis Graham? <laughs> or Graham? I don't know. I guess you would be saying it like Graham. Dolores Hayes. I tried Dorothy Warrior once, but a le <laughs> legal team came out of nowhere and stopped me cold. Ooh, what is this referencing? It's a reference to something, obviously. So what's your legal name, then? Rebecca Dorothy... Don't call me Becky. Okay. Rebecca Dorothy Willow Graham. A bit of a mouthful, if you ask me. So Dorothy's actually your second name? Should I call you something like Becky, then? People have always called me Dorothy rather than Rebecca for some reason. That's why I chose it. It's useful, too. People have tried to falsify stuff using my name and always get caught. Nice. Because they use Dorothy Hayes as their name? Yep. Only my mom or guardian calls me Rebecca, so it's weird to hear it from others. What about Willow? Willow's my first surname, actually. When I got registered, my guardian was married to a guy who had Willow as his last name. Shortly after I joined their household, they separated, so I left with his first or er, his fa so I was left with his family name first. <laughs> so hold on, your real name in short would be Rebecca Willow. <laughs> doesn't that have the same doesn't have the same pizzazz, if you ask me. Whatever you say, Becky. Stop it. It'd be like if I called you Julianne all of a sudden. <laughs> I like these little parts too. <laughs> oh, that was anger. I do lots of anger. I think it's weird enough already if you call me Jill instead of Honey. <laughs> weird, huh? How can you end up feeling associated with a name that's not yours? I have an uncle that always called me Tina and kept calling my cousin Tina Jill for some reason. Neither of us mind it though, because he's calling us what he thinks we're called instead of mixing us up. That and it's completely useless to try and correct him. But you know, maybe if that effect is true for your clients too. How so? Well, you're worried about your clients not hiring you because you're you, right? Well, think about it. What happens when it's announced that a character will be played by a different actor? Sure, it's a character, but people are also going for the actor playing the character. But there are a lot of outcries about that a lot of times. So you're saying they go for my roleplay instead of just mere roleplay. Ugh. Sounds too far-fetched. Sounds plausible, actually. Okay, honey, I'll take my leave now. Don't want to take up all of your break. Thanks for the chat. See you at the party tomorrow. Bye. I need to remember to buy more cigars. So, not only does she smoke, but it's like straight up cigars. Wow. Back, did I miss something? Unless you count the worst pay-per-view main event fight I I've seen all year, not really, no. Oh, that's a bummer. Alright. Going out. I'll still have a word with Gogo -Go outside. He was so hyped for that match, he must be devastated. Okay. Welcome to Valhalla. Oh, oh yes. She's here, we can invite her. Good evening, Jill. How are you doing? The nightmares have- oh. The, the nightmares have stopped, so I'm sleeping better. 
That's great news. <laughs> uh, how about your injuries? My bones are healing nicely. My wounds finally closed. The scars itch, though. Oh, well. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear. Are you by yourself today? Yeah, I'm running a couple of errands by myself today, but I wanted to come here for a while. I lost the cap to my pop bottle, so now I'm just kind of holding it off in the distance. That way, if I forget about it and spill it, it'll be away from me. I also noticed the big guy from last time is outside. Aw. Buster, Stella doesn't want me being alone while I'm still healing, so she suggested taking him with me. Ah, I see. What can I get you? Something cold, sure. She wants something cold again. Uh... Bloom light? Oh no, it's the gross brown one. Moonblast. No. Two karma trying, alright. And blended. Ta-da! Lunacy. Really? Oh. <laughs> so sweet of you. Thanks. So, Stella isn't with you today? She's throwing a mega Christmas party tomorrow, and she's- Oh, I guess she's not gonna be able to come to our party then. Bummer. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the- Ah, but man! My chair is not good for back support. Well, back support and recording simultaneously, that is. I can lean back, but I'm pretty distant from the microphone that way. As opposed to I can't, like, sit up straight because it's one of those circular-shaped chairs. I'm just helping her by checking on some of the things she ordered. And here I was, all ready to invite you to the party where throwing tomorrow. Oh yeah, I know. Bummer. You're throwing a party too? Sorry about that, I can't really say no to Stella. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe next time? If there is a next time at all. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. Man. <laughs> I want you to know that I want you to have a good time. The sigh is wonderful. Have fun, drink a couple of beers in her honor. <laughs> I will then. What are Stella's Christmas parties like? They're really big, there's lots of food and drinks and music. Sometimes there's too much food though. So at the end of the party she lets the staff take home whatever's left. Oh, that's nice. She also buys toys for all the children of her staff members. That's also nice. Really? She says something about taxes or whatever, but during the whole thing, she just shines. She carries a beaming smile that I don't see any other day of the year. Maybe if the kids have even calling her, st or have even started calling her Auntie Ella. Oh, <laughs> Stella does her best to put up a tough girl facade, but she's very in touch with her inner child. It's respectable. <laughs> Christmas, Easter, Halloween. Name a big party, or name a party, and she most likely celebrates it big. Interesting. Do you like parties, Jill? I don't mind them. They're a good place to see people. Sometimes, uh, I've not been to very many that aren't like my parents kind of inviting their friends parties but the couple I have been to mostly I've not been there because I'm friends with I've mostly only been there accompanying the one person I know 
while I watch, I just kind of observe everyone. It's an interesting time. I'm not one to actively look for parties to attend to, though. I just don't mind going to them. I see. I only go to parties that Stella is attending, because otherwise I just stand out, stand there without anything to say. But I'm not one to wear dresses, you know. You're not. I'm a tad too ripped. They don't look cute on me. Oh, uh, I'm sure that I'm sure that you would be able to find one. Although with all this healing I have to do. I won't be as fit for a while. <laughs> They're too breezy, too. I feel like I'm wearing nothing. But I bet you'd look good in a dress, Jill. It's been years since I last wore one. I wouldn't know. What? Last time I wore one, I remember worrying my arms were too thin or something like that. Uh, we all have a complex, huh? I mean, even Stella has her own. That's hard to imagine. Oh, but she does have one. She distresses a lot about her bust size, of course. Oh, the opposite kind of complex. She's a bit self-conscious about having a big chest. Really? <laughs> Again, I've seen bigger than hers, to be honest. Although I guess comparisons are useless here, they rarely help with complexes. But she does go the extra mile to hide it. In fact, I have no idea how she does it. I mean, I've seen her before and after, she tucks them away, but I guess I never cared to ask enough to ask the specifics. That's why when she goes out, she styles her hair in those, um, drills. Is that what that's called? They look a bit drilly, don't they? Decent move. Classic, uh, misdirection. She seems affluent enough, why not just go through reduction, sur reduction surgery? <laughs> okay. Miss Carmine? Okay. <laughs> I don't I don't know if that's how that goes. Ah I accidentally opened up my weather. Yeah, something she says something along those lines a lot. She has quite the admiration for her mother, so I guess breast reduction would feel like betraying her. I feel like there is rarely a night at work that Jill has where things don't go down this route at least once. Oh no, a phone call. I'm gonna have to put this on pause real quick.